Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, glad to see good turnout. Um, you all probably interested in sidecars. Yeah, more people will probably keep coming, so I hope it wouldn't uh, interrupt you too much. Um, so I'm Sergey Kanjelev. I work for Google, and I'm chair of Signode. Todd Neal and I work for uh, AWS and I'm a Signode reviewer. So sidecars. <laughs> you know this construction wouldn't probably steer well. When I was a kid, uh, small-ish, uh, I was spending time every summer with my grandparents and my grandfather has a motorcycle with a sidecar. Imagine um, sitting in a sidecar, there is no belt, no nothing, wind in your face, and so exciting. And I was small and imaginative, so I was like, oh, I'm steering a motorcycle. Oh, let's go left, let's go right. And like, uh, unfortunately, when I need, I need to watch my grandfather really carefully where he is going right, then I would pretend to turn my wheel and go right as well. But I was imagining that I'm still in the motorcycle. So um, Kubernetes was uh, feeling similarly to me. Uh, sidecars were still in the ports. It's like, yeah, it's not right. Uh, we need to fix it. So we decided that we need to fix it. And now it's fixed. We will be, so now, yeah. No imaginative uh, steering wheel that actually steers a motorcycle. So let's go to the next slide. So what is sidecars? Sidecars is a special type of container. It's a pattern that you will use uh, when you implement your um, workload. So let's say you have an application, you want to containerize this application. Uh, it may be existing code, it may be something that you write specifically for Kubernetes, but nevertheless, it's something that implements your business logic, you deploy it, and you want it to work. And uh, sometimes you need to, to work and you need to, to co communicate with something else. Like uh, sometimes you need to collect telemetry out of this container. You have different ways to do that. Uh, one of the ways is to get a specialized process that will go run and like uh, collect uh, logs when needed. And you don't want this process to run inside your container because you may have the different dependencies. It's much easier to just run a separate container inside your port and you're golden. Uh, same concept with networking access. You may have uh, different networking requirements and you want to deploy it as a, uh, some sort of container that is already existing on the market or you build it yourself. Uh, other things like security, somebody will download certificate and keep it up to date all the time so you don't need to worry about, uh, about it. And um, uh, data access is uh, also an interesting pattern. Uh, we see some drivers being installed as a sidecar. And the reason people also install the sidecar, not only because they can control it more precisely, they can configure it specifically for your port, but also you can account resources for your port. So imagine this driver is not installed as a sidecar, it's installed as a daemon set. In this case, whenever your workload goes to the daemon set, uh, daemon set uh, becomes a resource, shareable resource that may experience neighbor, uh, noisy neighbor problem. So as a container using up all the resources, you out of resources, so you don't have your data access there. Uh, it doesn't work really well. So sidecar eliminates this problem. Now, if you run sidecar inside your port, you are responsible for that and you charged for these resources. So you can limit it, you can unlimit it, it's your choice, but you are responsible for these resources. And it's a very powerful pattern in this uh, regards. In fact, there was a talk uh, on a day zero uh, talking about some data access pattern for AIML that using sidecar uh, as we developed uh, specifically for this purpose because they wanted to attribute all this cost of encryption and decryption to the port rather than like making system administrator pay for that. Uh, anyway, uh, this is sidecar pattern. And um, out, of, okay. out of all the existing concepts that we have today in Kubernetes. We have uh, init containers that runs to completion, runs in order, and we need regular containers that uh, start in almost a sequential order, and then whenever they all terminate, pot will terminate. 
So in this model, it's uh, quite easy to say, uh, let's take one of these containers and make it sidecar. And it works. So it was working for many years. This article was written, uh, I mean, on previous slide, article was written on like 2000 uh, uh, single digit year, I think, oh, maybe. Yeah, so uh, pattern existed and it worked very well for web apps. Um, web apps are unique. They never end, they keep going. Um, and uh, whenever a container crashed, it even restarted, so it works perfectly fine for web apps. Uh, more and more, uh, I mean, some people complain for, about sidecars in uh, web apps because uh, termination order is not uh, de declared. So if you want uh, to gracefully terminate your pod, then your main container may finish before you, uh, after your sidecar finished. So, uh, imagine you have a network uh, providing sidecar and your container still needs a sidecar, but sidecar is already finished because there is no ordering and termination. So there were problems like that, but it was edge case, like nobody cares about edge case that much. Uh, I mean, it will crash a couple of times. Who cares? Yeah, they know how it goes, but uh, hopefully you are not that person. You want real sidecars. So uh, we solved this problem. And another problem is that it was much bigger and it was in the face. Like it wasn't like this edge case, like when graceful termination happens, sometimes ordering is not right. This is a real problem. Um, you put monitoring uh, container in your job and it, the job never finishes. Monitoring still wants to run. It's running, it's running and running and sending zero metrics uh, unless you will manually uh, terminate this uh, job. So another problem for long running jobs we experienced is uh, if job is 10 hours and after first 15 minutes your uh, monitoring container suddenly decided to allocate too much memory just out of blue and it was umkilled, it will never be restarted. So 10 hours you will run blind without any monitoring, which also not ideal. So we wanted to restart sidecar. So many problems with jobs. And uh, we heard all these problems uh, as a community. It was even before I joined Kubernetes, so I, I, I heard that they heard. Uh, I saw very old issues describing these uh, problems and uh, uh, there were documents how to solve this problem and why it wasn't solved before. So let's uh, get uh, to the next slide. So um, to understand why it wasn't solved before, we need to understand what's happening now in Kubernetes. So as you may have heard on Keynote, Kubernetes is everywhere. It's ubiquitous, it's uh, new Linux. Um, so people running everything on Kubernetes, many, many different types of workloads. And for um, all those workloads, Kubernetes pretty much works. It's, it's okay. It's not bad. It's, uh, it, it can manage your workload reasonably well and you can uh, uh, hack things together so it will not, not even look ugly. So uh, it's great. And um, the problem was that uh, even for those workloads that we had, we didn't have it very um, uh, reliable in Signode. So Signode experienced a problem when we imp implemented many, many features, and suddenly we felt that uh, those features are not all po polished. Like we have a bunch of perma betas, uh, perma beta is something that permanently in beta. Uh, we had a bunch of code that is not well tested and not uh, uh, implemented as conformance. So we needed to do something about it. And we started uh, working on eliminating all these permabetas, cleaning up code, improving test cases. Um, and finally, we get to the very stable state. So now, uh, if you look at the Signode and Kubernetes, we are at 40 feature gates and 19 of them is experimentation. So now we get into this, like maybe one year ago, we get into mode when we're not only deprecating and cleaning up stuff, but we're also experimenting and we're experimenting a lot. And sidecar and main directions when we experiment is uh, uh, new workloads, especially AIML that are very popular now, but also like just before AIML, there were HPC, which are as important as uh, AIML. Um, and also we wanted to understand uh, hardware better. So hardware is not real, uh, real, uh, relative here, but uh, um, new workloads are definitely something that we want to support better. So. We've been on this uh, good point when we are reliable enough so we can uh, start experimenting and uh, introducing new features. And we also really, really want sidecars for new workload types. And when I 
say new work all types I keep repeating uh, bad jobs and uh, stuff but also we have uh, things like open telemetry that uh, uh, get so popular and fluent bit became, uh, fluent bit became like such a ubiquitous part of uh, uh, logs collection so all those uh, agents want to run inside your port and they want to run uh, more and more uh, inside the uh, jobs that you're running so to accommodate those uh, scenarios we really needed sidecars so again uh, remember this kid trying to steer the uh, sidecar uh, thinking that it's steering the motorcycle I want you to understand that sidecar feature is not a great new addition it's like not a uh, major um, it's not something that didn't work before. So it's worked before, especially for web apps. What we're fixing right now is fixing sidecars for new workload, and specifically for jobs, uh, when we will start uh, keep restarting these jobs. And um, uh, now we want to start talking about implementation of sidecars, and uh, Todd here will uh, walk us through the implementation. All right. So uh, Sergey reminded us um, about why we would want sidecars, the problems that we had. Um, and I'm sure everyone's probably tried to work around sidecars before, right? And start writing bash scripts and containers so that you can try to control the order of their startup with like files or amount in between them. And then do the same thing on the reverse side. And now you've got like this half-baked system D implementation in bash in your pod that's really running. Like, yeah, I see some shaking heads and everyone's like, yeah, that's fun to write. Um, so how, how are things better now? So a sidecar is an init container with a restart policy of always. And we can all go get lunch now, because I think that's, the, that's, really, that's really all we need to know. Um, the first thing you'll notice is, like Sergey said, there's not a new type of container. Sidecars are just init containers that continue to run. Um, and there's some neat things that come about from that. If you want to uh, sequence your regular init containers with your sidecars, that just sort of falls out of the implementation. Uh, in this case, we have a secret fetch standard init container it runs first because it's first in the init container list then our network proxy can know that the secret fetch container has already finished and it can start up then the log sender can start up after and then finally all of our main containers can start up and how does it really look though if you look at like the uh, pod lifetime so here uh, time going right towards or towards increasing towards the right our secret fetch container starts runs finishes and once it's finished we're still in the init container section we have a network proxy. It starts up, has a startup probe, a pre-start hook. Once it's running, we're now ready to start our log sender. We don't wait for the network proxy to finish. We have a log sender now, has a, you know, a uh, startup probe, maybe a pre-start hook um, or post-start hook. We run that, everything's great. And now we can simultaneously start, uh, start our main containers. Now we're ready for the pod to finish. We can stop our main containers simultaneously. And now we have our sidecars. Um, the log sender was the one we started last, so we terminate it first because there's sort of this implicit dependency that the log sender needs a network proxy, so we need to terminate the log sender first. And then we'll stop our network proxy, and finally our pod is completely done and terminated. Um, one way of thinking about this is that our sidecars lifetime sort of bracket the main containers, and they sort of bracket each other, and you kind of get this tower up and away looking figure of the pod lifetimes. And that lets you sort of make some uh, assumptions about container lifetimes that really weren't possible before without doing a lot of hacky stuff on your own. Oops, I think we skipped one. So initialization is pretty standard, but termination ordering is a bit more complicated. Um, so we'll talk about it here. Uh, you have free stop hooks, and then you have the stop container call that the CRI, or is made to the CRI to actually stop containers. Um, so with sidecars, the pre-stop hook effectively tells you that, hey, the pod is terminating. Termination process has started. So pre-stop gets called simultaneously uh, for main containers and sidecars. For the main containers, as soon as your pre-stop is completed, we call stop container, which ends up in a SIG term and eventually SIG kill if you don't exit. But for sidecars, that's not what happens. Um, for sidecars, we actually don't call stop container and you don't get a SIG term until it's your turn to stop. So in this case, log sender is pre-stop hook finished, but we don't call a stop container and we don't get a SIG term until all of the main containers are done. So your main containers can effectively rely on the fact that your sidecar containers will not be stopped 
until uh, all of the main containers are completed. Similarly, the network proxy, like the file container may depend on network proxy. So we don't call stop container and we don't send a sig term for the network proxy until the log sender has actually finished. So that's sort of how the termination works, a bit more complicated than initialization, but it gives you some nice guarantees about the lifetime and the relationships between the lifetimes of the various containers. And with any new feature, um, there's always ways to use and misuse it. Um, so we'll go through a few of those. Um, everyone's familiar with requests and limits on containers and you should always set requests and limits. Um, sidecars, still important. Um, one thing, and I'll get back to this in a few minutes, but if you're trying to figure out like what are these sort of sum of pod requests for this pod, like the, how much or how many CPUs does this pod require? And you go look at the containers, like, oh, it has one CPU and there's a NIC container, but actually that NIC container is a restart policy. If we look at the lifetimes, those are both running at the same time now. So uh, if you've ever sort of made assumptions that, hey, I'll just sum up the main containers and compare them with the max of the init containers, that's how I get pod requests, that calculation no longer works. So you really need to consider the lifetime of the pods and the resource requests and sort of take them into consideration with your, uh, your allocation planning. The great thing about sidecars is you get this serialized um, startup ordering. But if your startup is really slow, it can turn into one of the bad things about sidecars. So in this case, our network proxy is taking a really long time to start up. And because of that, the log sender, we don't even begin to start it until the uh, startup probe and pre-start hook have, or uh, post-start hook have completed. And in this case, log sender also has a really long startup probe and post-start hook. And what you end up seeing is that just sort of lengthens the time before we ever even begin to consider starting your main containers. So sort of a best practice, minimize the time before your uh, containers go ready so that we can quickly start all the other containers. Termination ordering, uh, or the termination, sort of the same problem. Um, there's a single uh, graceful pod uh, stop time period, and it's shared between the main containers and all of the sidecars. So in this case, our main containers, everything gets the uh, we'll start hook uh, immediately. We send sig term, the main containers exit, and then our log sender gets a sig term, and it just ignores it. So, hey, I don't wanna stop. And so what ends up happening is eventually we run out of time. Um, and once we run out of time, uh, we just quickly try to shut down the pod as rapidly as possible. So uh, best practice, exit your pre-stop hook as soon as possible and then shut down fully if you're a sidecar once you get that SIG term. Because um, if you're a sidecar, once you get a SIG term, you know that no one that depends on you is alive anymore, so you're good to shut down to, and that will let us quickly tear down the pod without exceeding the grace period. And then lastly, just a few things. Um, I said that the uh, resource calculation sort of summing up requests for a pod has changed. Um, so I'm certain that there are some metrics or cost accounting uh, tools that someone has written to like allocate cost to teams. Uh, those are all gonna be wrong in 129 unless you go update them to account for sidecars. So sidecars are in the init container section. So just be aware that you need to go check all that out and make sure it uh, works correctly. And then there's at least been one report of a mutating emission webhook that dropped the uh, restart policy field on init containers. So if you have any of those, uh, be sure and test those out with sidecars and ensure that it doesn't break anything. And other than that, just go out and use some sidecars. Go back to uh, Sergey to finish out. Yeah, you may have seen here that, um, I mean, we spend a lot of time drawing all those diagrams with dots, like six term here. What if it's here? Would it be better? And um, we've been uh, spending a lot of time debating and uh, understanding what will work the best. And we not did it alone, we did it with many, many people. Um, and uh, those people were not only Signot maintainers and Signot reviewers, approvers, code reviewers, uh, it also were people who actually implemented this. So we can confidently say that uh, we thought about almost everything that you may have think of uh, when you implement sidecars. So if we haven't uh, thought of something, or you think we haven't thought of something, maybe we just it's just impossible to implement. So some things are just uh, not uh, achievable in, in this uh, physical world. But uh, I also want to talk about something what's next. Uh, talking about sidecars, you, you, you enter the room and you say in sidecars, and immediately eyes lit and uh, people say, oh, you know what I wanted from sidecar, I wanted something else. So 
what we decided to do, we decided to take this approach with a smaller uh, footprint. We said that we will solve specific problems with a specific field, uh, and we did. So we uh, did alpha in 128, uh, we did beta 129, uh, beta now has termination ordering that uh, Todd was talking about in at length. Uh, so behavior of 128 and 120 difference a little bit. So if you want to implement something that will be surviving till GA, at 129 is your version. Um, and then adoption-wise, we already have uh, Istio blog post explaining how exactly you need to, you can try out uh, sidecar containers with Istio. And uh, GCS Fuse is uh, one of the uh, data drivers I was talking about, they also had a sidecar and already have a commit saying, like, let's remove all this old code and uh, we'll all get the sidecars and uh, it will be much better for everybody. So we have adoption, we have testing already. Um, so welcome to try it out as well. And uh, upcoming, so we have one small feature that we also want to deliver to GA. Uh, this feature will change behavior a little, 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 little bit. Um, most of people wouldn't notice it. Uh, it's a behavior for uh, for restarts of sidecars while pod is terminating. So imagine you're taking 30 minutes to terminate your pod for some reason. Maybe you need to uninstall drivers or like uh, clean up major file, uh, which is huge. In this case, if sidecar is still running, we want it to be keep being restarted if it crashed. So it's a very edge case scenario, but it's uh, important for some use cases and we really want to cover all of them. So the last feature we'll uh, take for GA as a part of this cap. Um, but uh, a part of this cap, we also had uh, uh, more goodness that people asked about uh, at one point or another. And uh, this goodness may or may not be implemented. Uh, there is no guarantee, but uh, it's something we hear a lot and we may want to uh, think about it more as uh, part of a follow-up on sidecars. So uh, th things like security boundaries, like uh, uh, right now there is no difference between sidecar and non-sidecar and people really concerned about it because sidecars may be an Envoy proxies that being injected and it needs a little bit of privilege to modify um, uh, what is this table, uh, a network table. and. Um, People may not want to have even like allow SSH access to this uh, sidecar that is, has a little bit more privilege, and they will maybe want to allow SSH to something that is a container that is less privileged and just using this uh, network tables. Um, what else? Uh, other things is uh, resource uh, reuse. So there are two types of uh, sidecars. One sidecar is logging. You want your HPC running on dedicated CPUs and all the logs and all, everything else running uh, as far as possible to not interfere. Uh, another scenario is uh, networking when you want to run your sidecar as close as possible to your workload so like networking calls wouldn't take uh, extra uh, hoop. Uh, so you want to run on the same NUMA node or something. Uh, and then other feature like crash back loop off and uh, better um handling. Uh, we all we hear all these features. Uh, they are not coming in as part of this cap, but uh, we may start working on it later. And uh, we also wanted to highlight something that definitely will not be part of uh, Kubernetes anytime soon. So um, one of the interesting requests we hear is when uh, sidecar needs to be declared in some other asset that will be automatically plugged, like uh, attached to the pod. So pod became like not a single YAML file, but a bunch of YAML files that uh, will be constructed together on the fly. So I don't think that will be uh, that will happen anytime soon. Uh, it's a neat idea though, but uh, it's not something that we actively pursuing uh, uh, right now. And uh, also we, uh, we've been debating a lot because we want to replace, uh, like emulate system D inside a pod. So do we want to make pod an orchestrator of containers? So you can say one container is depend on another container and depend on the third, third container. So run them specifically in this order. And if, if uh, container number two restarts, you restart like uh, start from the very beginning. You need to start the first one again. We decided that we don't want to go this uh, direction anytime soon. So pod will stay a uh, single deployment unit. You deploy main container, it runs to the completion or runs forever, but it doesn't have any orchestration inside the orchestrator. So yeah, that's uh, something we wouldn't implement. And there are a couple more features I listed here that is uh, like 
percentage of uh, usage. It's another interesting thing that uh, probably not happening anytime soon, uh, but it's a neat idea. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, we left specifically more time for questions uh, because we believe that uh, it's a hot topic. Uh, you can go to the microphone. If uh, you want to leave feedback, here you go. Uh, if you want to run, grab lunch. We are not offended at all. Uh, lunch is very important for your health. Thank you. So, uh, great presentation, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question, since you mentioned that you thought of everything, could you possibly share your thoughts behind why is it uh, filled inside an init container and not its own set of containers? Why did you make that decision to define sidecar containers, basically piggyback on init containers? Yeah, I can. So, uh, the main idea was that uh, we wanted to make sure that something running Sidecar is running while init containers are running. And uh, we also knew that not every init container wants to run with a sidecar. So uh, if we will put it in some other collection, we will need to have coordination with init containers after that. And but we didn't want this coordination. You effectively have it already, right? So the init containers without three start always run as init containers and only then the containers we, or can you actually mix and match? Yes, we can mix, mix and match and order will be preserved. So first container will run, second container with restart policy will start up and only after it's fully start up, second, uh, third container will run. So, so ordering is preserved. The container could be just a simple init container, yeah. not a sidecar. Yes. And it will run to completion before the next sidecar yes. container will run. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, in 1.29, how are you planning to implement the order of termination? Is it depend on the order of init containers that we configure? Uh, yeah, it's the reverse order that we started them up in. So okay. the, basically look at the list of init containers, look at your sidecars, and going in reverse is how they're terminated. Got it. Thank you. Uh, piggybacking off of the uh, first question. Um, Right now, the field uh, is set to like either never restart or always restart. Is there a uh, more option? Is there an idea for adding more options to that restart field, or is it just going to always be like never restart or always restart? There are ideas, um, not for init containers, but because for init containers, we basically support all of them. Like we have three: never, on failure, and uh, always. Right. So we kind of support all of them. Uh, I mean, you can only specify always or rely on default, and default will be either or, but uh, theoretically we can introduce three of them, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, the ideas are for uh, main containers. For main containers beyond uh, never on failure and the restart, the, some ideas of how, how can we say that uh, container is uh, so important that uh, it will restart alongside the entire port? So it will basically terminate the entire port and restart uh, as a whole port together. So that's kind of uh, new values. It may be the same field, maybe different field, but uh, that is uh, new life cycle ideas that we have for ports. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks for the talk. Uh, I just wanted to ask, I know you, about service meshes. I, I saw that you mentioned that Istio now offers uh, native support for uh, sidecar containers. Uh, do other service meshes not offer the support? How does a service mesh uh, handle requests and things from sidecar containers in general? Can you, if you can speak to that a bit. Um, so they're really, they're just, uh, they're just regular containers in the pod. Um, we just okay. start them earlier and then also define a termination warning. But other than that, they just act like regular containers within the pod. So if you have a sidecar that you're running as a main container now, for the most part, you can probably just turn it into a sidecar by moving it to the init container and set the restart policy to always. And you've gotten um, serialized and known initialization termination order. So it should work out of the box. OK, I guess I was a little confused by you know, what Istio means by native support. Maybe it's a better question for Istio, but yeah. So right now, how Istio works, it uh, has a, this injection proxy. And for every port, it will inject the sidecar. A sidecar is basically Envoy proxy, uh, pre-configured. It will inject it as a regular container. 
So what they implemented is uh, if they detect it's uh, 129 and it has sidecar support, they will inject it as a new type of uh, like init container with restart policy always. Mm -hmm. And it helps a lot because now they cover init containers, it ha they have better termination. So, I mean, it's the same functionality, but better. Okay, got it, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, I think like what uh, Sergey had mentioned with Fuse, it may allow some of them to remove some container or some logic that they're doing now where they're trying to sort of enforce this initialization order or termination order themselves and just rely on the fact that that's how, that's how sidecars work now, so. I have a question. So uh, once the pod runs, is it is it the default setting of the sidecar that it's going to run automatically once it starts? So we will... Um, from a Kubelt perspective, we will start you, uh, you be in sidecar, uh, and then uh, uh, we will start sidecar and we will mon monitor its execution. If it uh, terminated or finished, we will restart it and restart it and restart it. So uh, we will keep it alive for the duration of port uh, being alive. So, for doing any type of a code change, is sidecar can be at, can be of any value? the main container. Uh, can you, can you repeat the question? Uh, in order to do any code change, will the sidecar will be of any value to the main container? I mean, doing any code change and testing it? Oh, you mean if you have already sidecar implemented as a regular container? Yeah, correct. Yes, uh, I mean, minor changes will be needed. Mostly changes will be needed in uh, how you terminate. So typically, sidecars today, uh, we'll receive a sick term and we'll wait for a little bit uh, to provide services for main containers. Now you shouldn't wait, you just like terminate and you know that uh, it will be terminated in the right time. So probably you'll just remove a little bit of code, but other than that, it will work the same. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, so this kind of blurs my understanding a bit of like init containers and main containers. So init containers now are, are just kind of ordered and main containers are running in parallel. Is there any like interest in making that maybe more flexible where you could define like layers of ordering and parallelization or? Yeah, I think there was a, on one of the slides on the things that are not gonna be done soon anyway, or like sort of implementing a like, system D, like the, you know, container A depends on container B, depends on container C, and just build a dependency tree and figure out how to start up. Like this is um, sort of like a, a minimal API that gives us the ability to um, solve a lot of the problems that we've had with using sort of extent, extended sidecar containers before um, without uh, introducing a, sort of a whole new set of features. And maybe one more follow-up. Uh, if you only have one main container, is there a reason not to just use these init containers exclusively now or? Yes, um, the sidecar containers do not extend the lifetime of the pod. So okay, that's the other sort of key thing. So if, if that was your main container. I'll... So if you don't have any main containers then like it will terminate. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it wouldn't even start. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.